Hello, everyone. Welcome to the GitLab Duo Coffee Chat. And this is like a short challenge again. Um, this time I want to focus on refactoring per code. Um, and the specific challenge is we want to modernize the code, um, but we also want to refactor it into Python and see how this works. And we might be also uh, try to explore whether we can refactor per code into many different languages other than Python, but this is more of a bonus. Now, um, the instructions provide us with some insights already, and there's a script uh, dot pl, which is uh, the suffix for per. Now, the strict does something with a file dot md. The variable names are short, um, and something happens with that file somehow. Um, and then it prints something. Um, and again, the code is not readable. Um, for this example, it's intentional, but you might find production examples in a similar fashion or even like one, li one line um, of Perl code, which does something magic and um, cannot be replaced because it runs in production and it s solves a certain behavior, but actually you want to take over maintainership, make the code more robust or migrate everything to Python um, because the, the, the company policy requires that or a different language. Now, what we can do here is use GitLab Duo um, and ask Duo chat um, for example, to explain what the source code is doing just by typing slash explain. Um, and it's amazingly fast here, provides us with a lot of input. I think that's also because I'm using uh, the current gitlab.com uh, AI gateway, which provides us with uh, Claude 3.5 uh, as the underlying LLM. And um, we can see um, that the first group analyzes the markdown file and provides some statistics about its content. Uh, provides us with a breakdown of what it does. Uh, it also understands uh, the short variables and um, guesses what the S means, what the L, E, and H mean. So um, this is great um, to, to show you how it works. I've installed Perl locally with Homebrew on, on my Mac OS, so I can run that. Um, there's a file.md, which is like a copy of the developer advocacy handbook from a previous state. Um, and this kind of counts the line, uh, the total lines in the file, the empty lines and the header lines, just a small example. So this script is working now. What we can do is um, then again, again, select the source code and say, we want to refactor that. Um, just let's see what GitLab do with us. And um, it's amazing how fast this is today. Um, what exactly is happening here? Readability, maintenance structure. So what it does here is it replaced all the short variable names and actually used telling names. Um, it also introduces sub, which I think is a function. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it uses functions in Perl. Um, but we can also ask, uh, do a chat, explain what sub is in Perl. Um, okay, it's actually a subroutine. Um, pulls a lot of information. Um, so if you're not familiar with Perl, this is actually a great way to dive into uh, the syntax, the requirements and so on. Um, it's per simple function procedure. Okay. Yeah, this is actually what, what happens with the refactored code here. Um, but this is certainly only the first step. So making the code more readable and testable is, is a great first step. So it, it checks whether it's an empty line, um, uses best practices in, in Perl using regular expressions, extracts the header. This is something which exists here as well. Um, and then prints the statistics. Now, um, what we could also say is uh, refactor, uh, use 
uh, telling, I don't know the English word for that, but use telling variable names. Um, and full words for the summary text, something like that. That's probably a better version. Um, but if essentially uh, this was uh, under one second, I would say. So there's a different approach here. Like I could have said use functions as well, um, but I get the short version, but readable uh, variables. And also the summary actually uses the text so I can understand that. Now, if I just want to use that um, as an example quickly to test it, we should see the output um, on the terminal. Um, let's let's revert that and actually try something else. So now we've refactored and explained Perl code, and we have uh, we know that GitLab Duo Chat is capable of that. But now we want to refactor that into Python and then test whether the code behaves the same. Um, so let's see what's happening here. It generates code and it provides us with an overview. So um, in Python, it imports RE, which is the regular expressions library. I know that, but we can also ask GitLab do a chat. Uh, it defines a function process markdown file, uh, uses the same short variable names and then prints that. So this is a good first iteration, I would say. Let's copy that and open uh, the script and we can actually replace everything. Just copy that in here and then say, uh, since this is using PyCharm, I have uh, Python 3 installed using Homebrew on Mac OS. We want to run the script again and we can see we get uh, the same output, but it's not quite readable. So what we can do is um, instead of like, um, we can refactor that as well, but we could also refine the prompt here and say, um, refactor, oops, refactor into, Python, and this is a lot of fun, to be honest. I've um, been writing a lot of Perl code needed to learn Python in 2016 again. Um, and I had no help with that, but this is, uh, this can be a helpful way to kind of figure out um, what the best strategy would be, or if maybe even starting from scratch. Refactor into Python, fix uh, or use, telling variable names, functions, um, and full text summaries. I don't know exactly if that makes sense, but let's try it. We can always refine the prompt. It goes super fast with Python um, and it uses more functions, which is great because functions allow us to test things. So um, it reads a markdown file. Ah, it actually adds uh, doc strings. So we can use uh, Sphinx or Python docs to generate uh, source code documentation for these functions, which then helps everyone else uh, to use that later on or easily adopt it and understand what it does. So it opens the file. Um, it has proper error handling, which is great. Um, we can analyze markdown. Uh, it uses telling variable names, which is also great, and returns that. So Python allows you to return multiple um, variables in a function or from a function. Um, but we can also like just use that and then use slash explain again, which I think is, is also a great workflow uh, for generated code. Print summary. Ah, uh, yes, this is something I was expecting. And the main function is defined and this is the kind of way of calling that. Let's try it out before I read too much here and navigate again into the script file, replace that and see how it works. It works. We can see that the full text is used here. Uh, we still use the same file and it's a 
it's an amazing result for that. Now, um, what I want to do here is, uh, let me see, let me see what, how many changes we have. Uh, quite a few modifications here, but let's check out uh, solutions branch quickly. Get at uh, script py. Uh, solution one clean documented code. And um, oops, this was not great. Uh, I I shouldn't use uh, the dash a uh, git reset soft add and one thing. So we now have everything again, and we only want to commit uh, the changes in the script py. This is something I want to fix or change. Yes. Um, so now we have just this. And the rest is here, yes. So we can push that as a solution, which is amazing. Um, and then go back into the main branch, uh, which brings us back into the original thing. I don't know exactly what, what, what did I change, but it's okay. Now we have like the solution uh, in the branch and let's quickly check it out again. So we can continue here and we can, for example, select that code and say, please explain it to us. Um, because um, there's certainly uh, a way to better understand this. Now, um, what we can also say is add functionality, refactor at new counts for what, what could we count in markdown uh, or image tags in markdown. To be honest, I don't know if it works, um, but it's certainly an interesting approach. But also do that in the Perl code, um, but I think migration should be done in multiple steps. For some reason, the formatting is a little off here, but I guess um, that's to be in 10. I don't know, Maybe it's also a better way to not just, um, oh, image pattern. Yeah, that's actually, it's a useful way. The other thing we can do is, since we know we are in the analyze markdown here, we could say um, extract or image tags. Oh, this is Python, this is not C. Okay. Yeah, let's. Um, Let's just write image tags is zero. Okay. Um, PyCharm has a function functionality to gray out uh, variables that are not used. Uh, PyFlakes and other linters might call, call it out. Uh, and if, oh, <laughs> It actually knows from the variable name on top what I want to do here. That's amazing. Um, for some reason, uh, there might be a timeout involved, but code suggestions worked. And image tags also need to be returned here. Let's see. Oh yeah, it knows. Uh, so code completion also works with GitLab Duo. And now that we have returned that, and our last markdown is called here. Okay, it throws an error. Uh, we are in Python, we don't need to use any type things. Um, okay, we can kind of define the name, what that we want, and we can pass it along into 
this function? Does it make sense? Uh, it's probably a little too fast. Image tags and let's see if it knows. Yes, it knows. Um, so based on the uh, variable that's passed into the function, I can immediately complete that. And given that I actually added new functionality here, I should also see that reflect that. Where is it? There it is. Oh, we don't have any image tags in that um, file. Let's see. Uh, starts with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then um, we can also do. We can also test that quickly and say. Uh, I don't know. Uh. What I can show you, a small trick, also uh, also uh, helpful using GitLab Duo Chat, uh, create, uh, create uh, an image embed for a YouTube URL in Markdown using this URL. I've now fetched a URL, um, so we can actually ask to a chat to create an image embed for a YouTube URL in Yakdan using this URL. Um, and this is a, a another GitLab do a coffee chat, which uh, talks about refactoring and, and learning about COBOL, which I did earlier today. So um, this is something I want to copy paste just like this and maybe add another one and another one. It doesn't really matter. I just really want to see, um, okay, detect one image tag for some reason. Um, the regular expression might not be entirely correct. So let's see. Um, let's use that and say refactor fix regex for all sorts of image tags in Markdown and then see what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. Okay, image pattern, what does it do here? Image tags, ah, image pattern find all line. So certainly we need to copy this line. Oh yeah, this is much better to have uh, a regular expression um, in a single line and then say image tags are just this. Oops, the indent is important. And um, this should certainly allow us to do that. Um, we can also, yeah, I did forget it, but please explain this error. Just use to a chat to troubleshoot um, and help us understand what's going on. In this case, the, the fix is easy. We need to port the regular expression library, which is in the standard library. Ah, yeah, now I have four image tags, which aligns with what um, the file here does. Um, so yeah, this is actually a good um, a good time to call it a day and do a, a short summary of what we did just now. So uh, we analyzed a Perl script, which does some file parsing in a Markdown file. Uh, we were able to understand its purpose, what it does, um, and then tried to refactor the Perl code into more readable version, more variable names, um, improving uh, the robustness and maintenance, um, but then decided to refactor that into, into Python um, and made the first progress of a working Python script uh, with the same code. It also used the short variable names, but then we asked also to refactor it 
um, using long names, improving the maintainability, also using functions. So we can actually test that. Um, and just as a bonus exercise, we um, added a new functionality using code suggestions, but also do a chat um, to add or to pass the image tags. Since the regular expression was not great uh, in the beginning, we also used um, do a chat or like GitLab do in general to um, improve uh, the regular expression and also the algorithm and now have a, a working solution. Now, um, this is the, the summary. As a bonus, um, I'll, I told you in the beginning, let's try to refactor this uh, source code into Ruby and see whether this is actually possible. And I I would think so it is. Um, it uses a similar pattern um, like this, and this looks pretty good. Now let's try to refactor the source code into PHP. I mean, every language has their um, advantages and disadvantages. Um, I would presumably not use PHP for that purpose on the CLI, but you can do it if you need to. And it follows a similar pattern uh, using a PREC, a P R E G match with the regular expression call in PHP, to my knowledge, and then counts everything. Um, and again, we need to improve the source code quality overall. Could do that with refined prompts. Now, if I if I'm a little crazy, I could also say refactor into go did i miss uh, yeah python php ruby um but we can certainly try to refactor that into go um and see how far we can get um it uses the same variable names here the code is a little different um but it yeah the the regular expressions are, uh, are intact and so on. so this also looks good I would leave the exercise to you, uh, dear watcher, to uh, verify it's working, like prepare a Go project. Um, another approach could be refactor into Rust. Um, would probably work in a similar way because it's a common example um, and it can also be compiled cross-platform um, or like like static binary. Um, if I'm super crazy, I could say refactoring C. I don't know if this actually works, but I would assume so. Um, be mindful with C here. Um, it's certainly not the, uh, the preferred approach. So, but it does its job and it uses fget to read the line. Uh, remove trailing new line, check for an empty line, check for a header, um, certainly similar, and then print the summary. Um, so this is great, and it also explains what it does. Um, so I would I would guess it works. Refactor into C++. Um, I don't know if Perl, does Perl 6 exist? Um, I, I stopped looking into Perl, to be honest. Now let's assume what well, which other languages do we have? Um so this is uh C also yeah it uses um std regex, which I think is the more modern standard. Um and last but not least, what is our most favorite language? No, let's let's try Java. which provides um, a functionality with IO and file buffer or file uh, reader uh, and then counts things and it looks similar to the algorithm. It also has exception handling. So all best practices are applied. Um, refactor into, does it make, I don't know if it makes sense for C sharp, but let's give it a go. Um, and we can also test a uh, shell, PowerShell, and 
maybe Visual Basic or maybe something else. Uh, if you if you don't want to watch it, um, just skip ahead. Refactor into uh, Bash. Oh, let's try Visual Basic. Visual Basic dot net first. It's really really interesting how fast the source code flows here, um, but it's also uh, great to see the streaming and being able to immediately see something. Okay, I remember that many many years ago. Uh, we they missed uh, used to define uh, uh, to define a variable with a type, and then it's using a stream reader. We had to pass that. Sounds logical. What else did I say? Uh, refactoring to bash or any sort of shell. Uh, I can print the statistics. Okay, we will wait with the formatting until it's fully rendered. So we could use, yeah, while IFS is the read comment and then checking for empty lines. Oh, it's using an advanced version with like regular expression interesting um so yeah this should also work now that we have tested nearly everything refactor into powershell uh so you can run it on windows or any like uh compatible operating system where powershell is also available mm. and we can see this is probably something I need to test. I don't trust it, so I don't have too much PowerShell experience. But string is null or white space. Oh, actually, this, actually the, there's a built-in function in PowerShell, and it also support match or regex match, uh, which makes the, short, the code even shorter. Um, if I missed your favorite language, let me know. Uh, we can always do a follow-up. Now, um, to conclude here, we have tested many different languages um, and were able to refactor the Perl code with um, a working version, I would say, um, into different languages. So you're not bound to Python. You can use for um, specific languages you're targeting to test, um, to un use GitLab Duo to understand the code using slash explain, but also to refactor or use slash refactor um, to change the programming language, but also improve the readability, add documentation um, or inline documentation into the code, uh, add error handling, refactor into testable functions and whatnot. So there's endless capabilities, but with that, I want to conclude today. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time. Happy coding.